Hello everyone, my name is Murphy and welcome back to Black Beanie Gaming. I made a video a while ago where I built the Empire State Building here in Minecraft Creative Mode. I got a few comments from you guys, some of which were very kind and supportive, thank you so much for that by the way, and others that asked me if I could please do a more in-depth tutorial on how to actually build it. So, I threw myself into a super flat world and quickly became lost in the infinity of grass and sky. I picked a direction and began walking. until finally, I found the perfect location. So here's a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to build the Empire State Building in Minecraft Creative Mode. No mods, no fluff, no fuss, just a little elbow grease and a couple hours of free time. Okay, so obviously I built this little outline myself. It's just a street made out of coal blocks and a sidewalk out of smooth sandstone. Now, this video is a little long, so before we get started, I'll go over the different sections of the process and put up some timestamps for each. Part one, getting ready. I'll go over the blocks to use and a little bit of why I chose them, as well as some stuff about getting ready for a project that'll probably take you a few hours to complete. Part two, walls and roofs. I'll show you how to build the frame of the building from street level to the base of the spire. This is definitely the most complicated part of the build, but it isn't too difficult. Part three, windows and light. I'll go over where to place your windows and some tricks on how to illuminate your building. Part four, floors. You don't have to make individual levels to your building. It's perfectly fine to fill them in however you want, but I normally go into these projects planning to make easily accessible floors from the base all the way up to the top via staircases. And finally, part five, the spire. It speaks for itself. And Empire State Building has a famous spire, so it's very important we get it right. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. This step pertains to any large build. Minecraft only allows but so many items in your inventory, so to save time, it definitely helps to have everything you need for the upcoming phase of the project in your inventory bar, organized in a way that's most convenient to you. Now, PC players will be able to scroll through their items easily with the mouse wheel, but console players more often than not have to click with the bumpers to select new blocks. It isn't much trouble now, really, but several hours into the project, you'll understand how important it is to cut down on unnecessary effort. As we'll be building the frame of our building first, now is the time to decide the color palette of your building. It's a tough choice to make right off the bat, but an important one. Perhaps you'd like yours to be made of stone bricks, or sandstone, maybe even prismarine, even glass. It's up to you, but now is when we get to be the most creative with our project before we commit to a style or theme. Most bricks have a sort of family, smooth, chiseled slabs, pillars. If you'd like variation in your building, subtle or otherwise, it's best to choose a family of blocks with many options. Now, I use the natural texture pack when I play creative because it adds a little bit more detail and a more realistic color palette to the game, and when recreating Gilded Age skyscrapers like, say, Empire State Building or 30 Rockefeller Plaza, I tend to choose quartz for its rough likeness to the old concrete and its wealth of variants in the game. So, I'll choose and arrange which bricks I'd like to use, normally ordering them according to how often I'll use them, and we can get started building the frame of our building. The bricks I've decided to use are, in order, the quartz pillar brick, quartz slab, quartz block, quartz stairs, chiseled quartz block, black stained glass pane, and black stained glass block. Think of the frame as the skeleton of the building, or the mold that all of the details are eventually poured into. For the frame, all we need to focus on are the overall dimensions, exterior walls, and marking individual sections of the building, not to mention the roofs. Before we get to any of that, we need to make our base. For the Empire State Building, I'm using a 27 by 39 block base for the bottom. Eventually, the structure, including the spire, will be over 140 blocks tall. It's important that the dimensions of the base are made with the central spire in mind. By using two odd numbers, 27 and 39, I ensure that at the center of my structure is a single brick, allowing for a skinny and aesthetically pleasing central spire to be constructed at the top. So let's go ahead and make the base. Once the 27 by 39 block base is done, you can go ahead and fill it in. You'll see that I made a line of chisel quartz around the very edge while the rest is regular quartz. That's just an aesthetic choice for me. Afterwards, you'll want to mark the four corners of the base with pillar bricks. 
Next, you'll need to place a few pillar bricks on the floor in various spaces. These will eventually become the columns that stretch up through the entirety of the building to help illuminate the interior or to use as references when placing stairs or building floors. To make this easy, go ahead and find a corner, put your back to the 39 brick side, that's the long side at the bottom of the screen, and then follow these measurements to place your pillar bricks from the corner. Column A is six blocks up, 12 blocks over. Column B is seven up, 19 over. Column C is 10 up, nine over. Column D is 10 up, 15 over. That's overlapping column C. Column E is 16 up, nine over. Column F is 16 up and 15 over. That's overlapping column E. And column G is 20 up, 12 over. Once you've done this, follow the exact same instructions, but from the opposite corner, or until the placement of each pillar brick is symmetrical when viewed from above. We're gonna leave these alone for now, so don't get bent out of shape if they don't line up just yet. Now, let's go ahead and start building up the base. The base of Empire State is rectangular, flatter when compared to the rest of the building. So I've opted for two three brick tall floors with a slab at the top of every third brick to make a floor. A slab at the third brick allows more headroom than placing a full brick, but allows for more floors and a better, more true-to-life aesthetic. I'll primarily be using the quartz pillars to create my framework, accenting with regular quartz, chiseled quartz, and slabs as I go along. First, I mark the height of my base. The base is six blocks up. Five are made of quartz pillar, and the very top block is a regular quartz block to mark the roof. I'm using pillar as it has these vertical lines that make the building look nice and tall. With the four corners done, what I'm going to do is create a line around the top with regular quartz. This is the roof of the base. Now I'm going to do the same thing to mark the first floor of the base, working off the third or middle quartz pillar block. Once done, there should be two blocks of space vertically between the ground, your first floor, and the first floor, and the roof. Now. Let's address the ground at our corner and start placing a single pillar brick at odd intervals, meaning every other place, leaving a single empty space between them until you reach the next corner. The negative space between these bricks will be used for our windows later on. Build up your pillars until they reach the roof of the base. The empty space between them should be a single brick wide. Once completed, the frame of your base should look like this. Now we need to add some doors, which unfortunately means clearing out some of the pillars we just made on the ground floor. Facing the longer side of the building, the 39 bricks long side, go ahead and fall to ground level. From the corner, go ahead and count inward by 11 spaces. You should have landed between two columns, so in other words, the empty space there. Destroy every column between this point on either end. So, between 11 spaces in from either corner, there should be no columns on the lowest floor. Just like this. Moving back to the 11th space, move inward one space and make a regular quartz block column, two bricks high. It should be diagonal and in from the pillar column. Beside that, add two iron doors, then another two brick high stack of regular quartz. Diagonal out from that, add a two high quartz pillar column to connect it with the roof above. Add four more, a single space between each, and assemble another door exactly as you did before. Quartz wall, indented by one, two doors, another indent, and you should be right up to the other quartz pillar column. Do this for the other 39 brick side as well, and be sure to place pressure plates on the ground for easier entry and exit and feel free to add more doors anywhere you'd like. Okay, now I'm gonna start using my quartz slab to make a roof. It's important we do this now so we have a base to build the rest of the structure on. I'm gonna build the roof until there's a large square of empty space in the center visible from the top. To start, find a corner and face the inside of the top quartz brick. Align your crosshair with the top half of the brick and place the slabs sideways until you reach the next corner. Do this until you've created one row of slabs around the entire base. Create another three rows of slabs along the 39 brick wall until its roof is four slabs wide. Do this again for the opposite 39 brick wall. 
Now face the 27 brick long wall and add lines of slabs until the roof is eight slabs thick. Do this again for the opposite wall. It should look something like this. Now take the slab and create a bezel along the outline of the roof, like this. Not only is this visually appealing, but it comes in handy in a second. Now we have to create the outline for the lower portion of the tower. Empire State's lower third is a little complicated, but it's essentially just a group of overlapping squares and rectangles. It's definitely not difficult. First, we're going to find our corner. Let's face a corner of the roof top down, so the bezel creates an L shape, doing so so that the 27 brick long wall is vertical and the 39 brick wall is horizontal. Using the bezel as a guide, move horizontally and count five slabs from the corner. Now, count vertically by four spaces. Place your first pillar brick here. There should be three empty spaces between it and the bezel. Now move forward, placing a pillar every other space so that there is a one brick gap between them until you have placed 10 pillar bricks total. Once you place the 10th, you should see that it has three bricks of space between it and the opposite 39 brick wall and four from the 27 brick wall. Now, at the first and 10th bricks of your new row of pillars, move in by two bricks and place another pillar. This block should be seven places from the 27 brick wall and three from the 39 brick wall at either end. Follow the exact same procedure on the other side of the roof. The end result should look like this and should be symmetrical if cut down the middle either horizontally or vertically. Now return to your bezeled corner and move horizontally by eight blocks and then move vertically by three and place another pillar brick. It should be diagonal to the other pillar brick. Now, move back and place another brick right up against the bezel like this. Move inward horizontally, placing three more bricks against the bezel, leaving a space between each. These new pillar bricks will be 10, 12, and 14 spaces respectively from the corner along the 39 brick wall. Now, move vertically by two spaces and place another brick. Move up diagonally inward from the brick you just placed and place another. This is 15 spaces from the corner along the 39 brick wall. Place four more pillar bricks every other space for a total of five pillar bricks. Move down diagonally from the previous brick and place another. Move down two spaces, place another, and moving horizontally, place three more with a space between each. Move vertically by one and place the final brick diagonally from the brick that was there before. Repeat this process for the other side. Now it's time to start building it up. Facing the building from either 39 brick wall, the leftmost and rightmost groups of pillars will eventually be 15 bricks tall in total, or five stories. That's the 10 outer pillars and the two indented ones we made earlier. I use quartz pillar to build up by 13 additional bricks, then cap off the pillar with a regular quartz brick. That's the original pillar brick at the bottom, 13 additional, and another regular quartz brick to make 15 total. We should then connect the quartz brick tips as we did with the roof of the base to make a nice outline. Do this for either end. Once you've created the outline with solid quartz bricks, face the inside of the bricks and align your crosshair with the top half of the quartz. Select your slab and fill in the empty space to create a roof. It should be two slabs thick. Once you've done that, go ahead and create a third line of slabs along the full length of the inside of the roof. Now do so for the other side. So unfortunately, here's where things get a little complicated. Empire State's lower third has many tiers, which will be offsetting at the top of each completed section after raising every pillar to that height. It won't be too bad. Just be careful as you go along to make sure everything remains symmetrical. Go ahead and raise the remaining columns to the same height with quartz pillars. It should all be flush, but only those initial pillars should have regular quartz blocks on top. Everything else should just be quartz pillar blocks. Now to make the next section of the tower. Now we have what looks like a rectangle with four protruding sections. Here, 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 and here. Those protruding sections are the next order of business. Raise each column by another five pillar blocks and top them off with a solid quartz block. This constitutes another two stories. Do this for each until it looks like this. 
face the building from the 27 brick side, either end has two columns taller than the roof. Go ahead and add three more columns to match them, built up from the roof of the previous set, being sure to top off each column with a solid block to mark the roof. Do so for every corner. This should be the result. Alright, so let's face the building from the 27 brick side. You'll see that there is a bit of space between these new group's pillars. So head inside your structure, like this, and add another line of slabs to create a floor between them. Here's what that should look like on the other side. Back outside the building, add a pillar brick diagonally inward and create a new line of columns. There should be room for four with a single space between. Now take them up until they are flush with the roof line of the other pillars, but don't top them off with regular quartz bricks. Now, raise all the other pillars to the same level. Here's what that looks like. The outline of the roofs you just made, go ahead and fill them in to make four nice, stubby rectangular roofs, just like this. These are going to be the floors for our next section. Again facing the building from the 27 brick side, you'll see our four indented columns in the middle. We're going to raise these by another five pillar bricks, topping them off with this solid quartz block to mark the roof. On either side, add three more columns in an L shape, two over and one in. Now, raise them and cap them off as well for another two stories gained. Do so for the other side. Face the building from the 39 brick side. There are five columns in the middle. Raise the middle three by five pillar bricks and top them off with regular quartz, just like this. Raise the outer two columns by six pillar bricks, no cap. They should all be flush. Use the regular quartz blocks to connect the inner three columns with one another, then to the outer two, but stop there. Here's what that looks like. Take your pillar brick and, from the roof just below, add two more columns on either side, one space apart. They should be six pillar bricks tall. The corners of these new pillars should be three places inward from the edges of the four roofs. Repeat all of this until your structure looks like this. Connect the roofs along the 27 brick sides. Facing the 27 brick side, find the roof outlines you made and fill in the space with a line of slabs. As we did below, add another line of slabs across the whole thing, just like this. Do the same thing for the roof outlines on the 39 brick side, being sure to add an extra line. And that'll look like this. Now to start the enormous midsection of the tower. Facing the 27 brick side, and this is simple, add another quartz pillar to the two outermost columns and, using the roof between them, connect them with a line of quartz pillars. A single space between, as always, just like this for both sides. Now facing the 39 brick side, all you have to do is add four pillar bricks, a space between each from the small roof you made, like so. Now raise every uncapped column by one to be flush with the rest. And here comes probably the easiest part of this whole thing. Raise every single remaining column by 55 pillar bricks. Start with a corner, raise it by 55 pillar bricks, use that as a gauge so you don't have to count the individual bricks of every column. Once done, and it'll take a while, it'll look like this. Now all except the indented four columns on both 39 brick sides will be capped off with a regular quartz brick to mark a roof. This entire section, the entire column, roof brick included, should be 57 bricks tall. Add a single pillar brick to the indented columns to make them level with the rest. Fill in the roof with slabs. Do this on both sides. From the 27 brick side, move in by one place and add a row of pillar bricks on the roof, separated by one space. 
on the 39 brick side and a pillar brick on the roof placed diagonally to the outermost of the four indented columns. This will create an empty space two blocks wide between the outer columns, and that's okay. Repeat for all sides. Raise the indented columns by one pillar brick so everything is level. Then raise every column by 10 more pillar bricks, just like this. The outer columns will be topped with regular quartz for a roof outline. Raise the indented columns by one pillar brick to make everything flush. And then the space filled in with a line of slabs. We're only adding two more floors now, so go ahead and raise the indented columns by five more pillar bricks and top them off with a regular quartz brick. Add another pillar column from the roof below on either side with one space between them, and then cap it with a regular quartz block and connect them for a roof outline. From either 39 brick side, there should be six pillar columns with a single line of regular quartz along the top, like so. Take a slab and create a short bezel by placing one slab on the roof outline, dead center, and adding three to either side. It'll look like this on both 39 brick sides. On the 27 brick sides, add a pillar brick column diagonally out from the ones on the 39 brick side. Create a row of them until the last sits diagonally from the other outermost column on the opposite 39 brick side. It should be seven columns, each five pillar bricks high, topped with a regular quartz block, connected, but without a bezel. It'll look just like this. Now all that's left is to create the base for the spire. Start by filling in the square space between the roof outlines with slabs. Fill it all in. On the bezeled sides, place a single pillar brick at the dead center line of the structure. Place two on either side with a single space between each. On the flat sides, place a pillar brick diagonally out from the ends of the other rows, then create a row of pillar bricks with a space between them. Take a quartz stair brick and place one stair block atop the outermost column, then connect them with regular quartz bricks. This should be the result. And that, more or less, is the frame of your building. We aren't going to build the spire yet, however. First, we have to place the windows and light up the interior. All right, this part's pretty easy, but it is a little tedious. It probably requires the least bit of explanation though, so I'll try and keep things brief. In order to make the windows of your building pop, you want to use glass panes instead of glass blocks. This will create some variation on the outside of your building, keeping it from looking too blocky or smooth and boring. So now it's time to pick a color. As I stated before, I'm using black stained glass because it has a much better contrast with the white quartz. Now be sure to grab the glass block for one brief portion of the frame. You may have noticed that we didn't put bricks on the frame to separate floors. That's because we won't have to. Once we build the individual floors, assuming you'll do that with me, thanks to light and shadows, we'll be able to see the floors through these long vertical stripes of glass panes. So before we fill in everything, take note of your inventory. Be sure to have the following. A glass block of your color, a glass pane of the same color, and the same bricks that you use to construct the frame in case you accidentally break part of it, say pillar, regular quartz, slabs, what have you. Now, take the glass block, not the pane, and face your structure from the 39 brick side. Find the part in the very middle where we indented by two, four columns with spaces between. You'll notice that in the gap between the outer columns and the indented columns, on the right and the left, we can't place a glass pane because there's nothing for it to attach to on the other side. Rather than delicately placing two glass panes on top of one another to make an L shape, we're simply going to place glass blocks instead, all the way up, just like this. Do so for both sides. Just be sure not to place glass blocks below the four column indentation. In fact, go ahead and place a slab at the bottom, just like this. Every other empty space between columns that isn't occupied by a glass block or a doorway will be filled with a glass pane. Start wherever you'd like. I normally do at the very bottom and work my way up by sections. It'll take a little while.
Once done with that, your building will start to bear an eerie resemblance to the Empire State Building, albeit without the spire. Now for lighting. There are a few ways to light these buildings. End rods are a good option, powerful, bright, but obstructive to your character. In other words, you can't walk through them. The same thing with lanterns. You'll see how I just walk right over it. Sometimes the easiest path is the best path. In this case, torches. In your inventory should be torches and all previously used building materials in case you accidentally break something. Now, I love the interior of my buildings to be bright and vivid, and torches don't cover a very large area, so I tend to go a bit overkill by placing them on every column on the inside. But in the end, it's all a matter of personal preference. A good way to tell how much light your building is getting is by placing torches in the dark. Something to keep in mind, however, as we get started. Every floor of the structure is three blocks high, but the top brick, or the third brick, needs to remain free in order to place a slab for the floor above. So it's best to place your torches where they can deliver the most light, dead center on a column or two blocks up from the floor. Now fly around the interior and place your torches along the walls, pretty much wherever you'd like. If you are making individual floors though, I'd start at the very bottom of the structure. Use your slabs and mark with a single row where your floors are going to be. Remember, every three blocks. This will create a kind of cross-hatched look to your walls, but might be very useful when you need to get your bearings while floating around. This will take a good long while. Place torches indiscriminately wherever you want to achieve any kind of look you'd like. My method is simply cover every column. Two up from the floor for a nice, even covering. Once you're done, it might look something like this. Let's head back to the top of the building and add some light underneath where our spire will go. Add the beacon and quartz stairs to your inventory, and make sure you have torches and regular quartz blocks as well. Once at the top, go ahead and place a torch on the floor behind every pillar brick, not behind the glass. Then, place a beacon between the stair pieces at the corners, marking the roof outlines, just like this. Behind the row of regular quartz roof outlines, add a row of stairs just behind it, but facing you. It creates a divot behind the roof outline, just like this. Once you have the stairs going around the entire roof, fill in the empty space with regular quartz bricks. It'll look like this. Now you can hop back down to the street level, and we'll begin on the next phase. This part is as complicated as you want it to be. Now, I prefer my buildings to each have individual floors to explore, accessible via staircases all the way to the top. If you don't want to, it's very easy to just create walls behind the windows and let that be the end of it, or just have flat floors that can't be reached by stairs. In any case, the rest of this section will cover making the individual levels as I did in my first video with columns and staircases. As with all the other parts, the instructions are symmetrical, which means that either half of the building will mirror the other. Open your inventory and add quartz slabs, quartz stairs, quartz pillar bricks, torches, and black glass panes. Remember the pillar bricks we assigned letters to at the beginning of the video? Now's when we build them up to their appropriate floor. Here's how many bricks to add vertically to each. To both of the A columns and both G columns, add 25 pillar bricks vertically, and then top it off with one regular quartz brick. For both of the B columns in the middle, add 31 pillar bricks and top it off with one quartz. For both C columns and both E columns, add 20 pillar bricks and one quartz slab. And finally, for both D columns and F columns, add 103 pillar bricks and add one regular quartz brick. Feel free to pause the video here in order to use this visual guide as a reference. Now recognize that both sets of D and F columns make a 7x9 block rectangle when viewed from above. That makes for an empty area of 5x7 spaces. 
This area will remain empty for every floor, all the way up the center of the building until the top floor. Be sure to place as many torches as you'd like along the pillars to illuminate the building's interior. I prefer to cover all sides with torches, two blocks up from the floor, eye level with the player character when standing on each individual floor. Here's what that'll look like. After you have everything lit, add in your floors using the slabs. There's really nothing complicated about this. Just be sure to leave the 5x7 empty space between the D and F columns so you can fly up and down between the floors as you need to. Now if you're like me, you want to add staircases. So before I finish my flooring, I figure out where I'd like my staircases to go. On the ground floor, I like the double staircase just like this, facing away from one another. Four wide, just until it meets the next floor up. For every floor on up, from the second to the top, I'll use regular rotating stairwells between C and E columns on either side of the second floor. I add a regular two brick wide staircase. Once one is complete, I make an about face and add in another until it spirals up and up to the 12th floor. Once we get to the 12th floor, the staircase will now be a single space thick, and I'll place it between the column and the wall on the 39 brick side. This extra length is needed. Again, spiral staircase up and up until the top floor. Once each floor is done, after what has felt like an entire weekend, all that's left to do is to make sure a slab row connects our D and F columns, and a row of black pane glass goes between them. After that, feel free to gently fall down to the bottom and take a step outside to admire your handiwork. And now we can finally move on to the spire. Okay, here comes the best part, the crown jewel of our building. Now before we get started, let's get our inventory sorted. What you'll need for the spire are the following. Pillar quartz bricks, regular quartz bricks, chiseled stone bricks, stone brick stairs, blocks of coal, iron bars, smooth stone slabs, stone brick walls, and end rods. Once you have those, go ahead and fly up to the top of the building. Our next goal is to square off the top of the building. Why weren't we making the whole building square to begin with then, you might ask. I'm trying my best, I'd respond. Sometimes that isn't so great, but look how far we've come. First, we want to make our corners. From the 39 brick side, move in just past the line created by the quartz stair bricks, right here. Destroy a single row of regular quartz bricks from either end, then replace it with a row of quartz stairs facing you, like so. The regular quartz bricks should now be a 7x7 seven seven block square area. Still facing the 39 brick side, place a 3 brick tall column of pillar quartz bricks behind each of the beacons. Next, create a 7x7 seven seven layer of chiseled stone bricks atop the flat layer of regular quartz bricks, just like this. Move in by one space and create a 5x5 five five layer of chiseled stone bricks atop that to give it a tiered effect. Starting at the corner of the 7x7 seven seven layer that's between the short pillar brick column and the 5x5 five five layer of chiseled stone bricks, place an end rod vertically, like this. Now place another one every other space all the way around until it looks like this. Once you've finished that, take your regular quartz block and create a layer atop the 5x5 five five layer of chiseled bricks, just like this. Then, add a row of smooth stone slabs around the lower half of the regular quartz bricks. Do this all the way around so it covers the tops of the end rods. Then, add another row, this time to go between the pillar brick columns. It'll look like this. 
Now add a row of smooth brick slabs to the top half of the 5x5 five five layer of regular quartz slabs, all the way around until it looks like this. Now take your iron bars and create a row of them connecting the bottom bricks of your quartz pillar columns. Connect them all, then add another row on top. Now find the center block of the 5x5 five five layer of regular quartz. Take a block of coal and create a vertical column 21 bricks tall. Atop the quartz blocks on either side of the bottommost coal block, place an end rod vertically. At the corners of the 7x7 row of smooth stone blocks, place another group of three brick tall columns of pillar quartz brick. Move inward by one to the corners of the 5x5 quartz brick layer and add four pillar columns, each nine bricks tall. Move diagonally inward yet again, and in the space between the column you just made and the column of cold bricks at the center, create four more pillar brick columns, each of them 17 bricks tall. Once done, top these last four columns with a regular quartz brick and connect them to make a three by three row of regular quartz bricks around the column of coal. Place an end rod horizontally, like so, between the four pillar brick columns right below the three by three row of regular quartz bricks. Moving right along, take your iron bars and add a three by three row atop the regular quartz bricks. On top of the iron bars, place a three by three row of smooth brick slabs. Now, on opposite sides of the topmost block of coal, it doesn't matter which sides as long as they are opposite one another, place a single iron bar. Atop that, place an end rod vertically. And finally, create a thin vertical column made of stone brick wall pieces 21 blocks up from the coal column. Top it off with one final end rod, and boom, there it is. A fair likeness of the Empire State Building in Minecraft Creative Mode. That's it for this video guys, I really hope you found this helpful or at least informative somewhat either when building the Empire State Building or in the methodology that I use when it comes to making these things. If you liked it, please feel free to comment down below which building you'd like to see a tutorial on next, or if you have any other suggestions for the channel, I also do Let's Plays and some news segments every now and again. Whatever you'd like to see, please let me know. Please like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell thing to get notifications. Follow me on Twitter at Murphy underscore BBG or at Black underscore Beanie. And follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Murphy BBG or on Mixer where my handle is, you guessed it, Murphy BBG. Thanks so much for stopping by today. It means the world. I'll see you guys next time.